Welcome to Uncage, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Maybrouline Francisco. Hey, Maybrouline, how are you? Hola, hola, hola. Hola, hola, hola. Now, Maybelline goes by Meb, the nickname Meb. So I'll probably be calling her Meb throughout this interview. But I'm really excited to talk to Maybelline. And she's working at, I think, one of the best agencies that, out there, uh, which is Mediacom. And they help people, brands, and businesses unleash their growth potential through media. But the hot topic today for everybody in the media world is data. And Maybelline focuses on that. She is the global head of audience and data enablement at Mediacom. As an integral part of the data solutions team within Mediacom, Meb is a strategic data partner serving as a bridge to data and tech stack solutions. I have been living with the world of data as my son has decided he wants to go become a data scientist. So I'm excited to talk to Mev and hear what she's up to. But before we do that, before we talk about Mediacom, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career to date. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I took a very atypical approach. I guess, to where I am today in the sense that many of my colleagues started in a, in a digital background, mm -hmm. whereas I started more traditional consumer marketing research background, just because I fell in love with the voice of the consumer and fell in love with what motivated people to do things and take action. And it served me very well, right? Because now if you, you think about where I am today, it's doing the same thing, only with much more robust uh, dynamic data sets, but it's right. still segmentation in a broader level. Um, so that's where I started. From there, I fell in love with analytics and specifically understanding how media drives impact, business performance impact through market mix modeling. And then I took a bit of an interesting, um, I guess, niche where I focused on understanding the voice of the multicultural audience mm -hmm. and driving analytics. So a lot of my work at that, at that time was to help marketers understand how do they take um, the ever-growing, that changing landscape of the multicultural market and applying that across all of marketing, not just media, so, which was very interesting and very fascinating. Then from there, I went into more data lake and data lake management, mm -hmm. um, and finally led into a place where, how do I take advantage of that? How does that um, access to either first party data or data in general allows mm -hmm. me to make stronger connections with my uh, consumers or my customers, which right. is where I land today. That's great. That's really, really exciting when you can use data, data analysis to find that insight that kind of crack the, crack the value relationship with a customer. Tell Absolutely. me a little bit more what you're, what you're working on specifically at Mediacom. So there's three avenues to, to what I'm doing in a broad level. One avenue is ensuring that we have a practice uh, um, that allows um, us to really provide the solution to the clients to help them understand how do they leverage their first party data in more actionable ways. So a lot of our clients have data sets that sit within and how do they, their time to value um, is very long because it's either sitting disparate platforms or the, there isn't an internal centralized team to help them navigate the, the platform connectivity and what ends up happening is that a lot of first party just sits there kind of. Mm. And what we do is we help teams strategize. Well, how do I really take advantage of all these data sets I have about my customers? And then how do I create a, a data strategy around that that starts with that as my foundation? And mm. then how do I build on top of that depending on my business objectives? Right. And then how do I action 
so that I'm less reliant on a cookie and more reliant on my, my data. So that's, that's one practice we're building. The, right. the second thing that we're focusing on is putting ourselves up to speed, right? So as this, as, as the in, industry continues to grow and expand and move, we have to move and anticipate and um, not only intersect, but predict it and be there when, when finally the marketplace catches up. So a lot of the work that I do is working with sister data company like uh, Choreograph to help us create a very strong foundational data architecture and uh, infrastructure so that we can service to our clients audience-based solutions that are tied back end-to-end -end from audience creation, planning, activation, and measurement. It's really interesting because I, I know that the first element is a huge topic, a broad yeah. topic in the industry today. As we, you know, people have talked about things like a, a cookie-less world mm -hmm. and how do you build data strategy. Put some of that stuff that you guys are doing into the context. I mean, I think it's also related to the second thing you said, which is education. Um, you know, where are clients on that journey right now? There, there, what we're finding is that um, there's a different level of maturation. Mm -hmm. And it really is not dependent on category at all that you would expect. Oh, um, the, because we do see some clients that have direct to consumer interaction and they're still not leveraging or taking uh, as much value out of that data as they can. Right. And then there's some clients that they don't have direct to consumer interaction and they're pretty advanced in the way they are approaching the marketplace and how they're setting themselves up for, for the future. So what we've done is create tools and capabilities and ask, um, assessments, if you will, to help clients identify the biggest vulnerabilities. So where they are in that journey. Right? So it's not just what I think is happening, but really assessing that through the lens of data, through the lens of investment, through the lens right. of uh, technology, to the, to the lens of measurement. Mm -hmm. um, give them that, that score that here's where you are, here's where your biggest vulnerabilities are, uh, that you will have challenges in the future once all these data signals are lost. Um, but in addition to that, help them prioritize yeah. what their testing schedule should be, what the roadmap should be. Because I think that what we're finding in this discussion, I, I was in a panel once that everybody was saying, oh yeah, testing, testing, testing. But mm -hmm. how do you prioritize that? Because <laughs> right. there's so many solutions, you can go crazy. So yeah. I think the assessment portion is important because yeah, you it's can a, prioritize. It, you know, it, well, you're making me think of something too, which is that I would imagine, certainly with the clients that Mediacom has, I mean, you guys mm -hmm. work with Fortune 1000 companies they'll be doing quite a bit in terms of they'll have a tech stack. They'll be doing mm -hmm. some you know, financial data, transactional mm -hmm. data will be flowing through their systems for sure. And so really, I think the tricky thing is obviously not just imposing a stack, but working with what they have to kind of get the most optimize out of it. it. Yeah. yeah, to optimize it. And, and to teach them that there's, there's a couple ways to identify or to qualify value, right? So there's value of what, how we can enrich what you already have. So you can get more information mm -hmm. out of that. So for example, if you think about um, companies that do very well, companies that understand, they meet the, the consumer where they are. And how do they do that? Well, they have an engagement model that is very sophisticated. People are giving them a lot of data. So, and they mine that data. So how do we get into wherever possible, right? For Because it's not possible for all clients, but wherever possible, you can start mining to get insights that will impact your overall, overall strategy. And then again, how do you work on data capture and how do you work on data execution so that you can also use it for activation purposes? And those are the two things that um, it gets missed in this equation. We yeah. focus a lot on the activation part, but there's a lot to learn from the customers you have. And it's about training uh, a lot of these marketers on how to do that, how to squeeze value out of what they already have. Right. And, and go deeper there. Absolutely. So, so let me change gears a little bit, Meb, and, and ask you about the last couple of years. Um, it's been an interesting moment. And oh my goodness. I can yes, only imagine the, you know, from, from the data perspective, the, how, the shifts that, that happened. 
But tell me a little bit about the insights that you have drawn from that period and um, maybe some of the opportunities that you guys are finding and how you're applying those insights. I think one of the biggest insights we're learning is um, because of COVID, a lot of people were doing retail at home. Mm. They started doing new behaviors that they weren't doing before. And there's stickiness to some of those behaviors. Mm. It will remain. And I think it will still, the test of time, will we'll prove that out, the hypothesis out or not. But there's also the sense of now um, personalization. Meet me, you brand, meet me where I am. There was a right. really interesting McKinsey report that came out in 20, so at the end of 2021, that we're seeing it on our side. The personalization still remains very relevant. And personalization, not just the, the right message, uh, that's one component, but also the right experience, the right uh, uh, flow that, that makes sense for me, the right engagement, mm -hmm. um, the right product recommendation. And they're all tied together because what were we doing in the past two years? We were working with a lot of, uh, well, you know, buying from a lot of companies that can predict what we needed. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got used to that. And it's weird now when, wait a minute, I go into your site and you can't tell me what you think I need. <laughs> and, and we're seeing that even at CES, it was a really interesting uh, panel where the, the head of data science at Instacart even said, we had to adopt and get better at predicting and get better at these algorithms because that is not going away. There's this newer expectation. So personalization is taking this really more interesting kind of um, expansion beyond just meet me where I am, tell me the message that I want into the whole engagement with that brand. It's really um, tell me where, what I want to, to be exposed to. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's becoming more meaningful than ever, I would say. Yeah, no, it's really, sure. really um, interesting. I must admit it's been, as the pandemic has faded a bit and I've gone back to stores, I quickly miss shopping online <laughs> so I, I, right I, it's I, weird I, to say it's like and, oh wait uh, yeah. yeah well i think it's just that you know, the the response is certainly in, in, in situations one is because of the just general supply chain issues for companies yeah. right uh there's a lot of empty shelves still yeah. and and you, don't, you don't see experience. them you don't see them online you know exactly. so that's part of it right so yeah, and the sure. journey, it, it's gotten better. And I think um, more brands are getting to the point where they're getting better at that journey mm -hmm. and using that data. Um, and I think more brands are understanding the importance of not, not treating data as a commodity, but mm -hmm. tre treating data as a true value exchange, like yeah. an opportunity to expand that. I, I use that term a lot. And a lot of people look at me like, why do you use it so much? Because there's, there's two angles to it from um, business to consumer. Right. The more I can create value and give you what you want, the more you're going to come back to it. It's like, right. it's like a no brainer. Like we all know this, but we obviously are falling short if we haven't been delivering on that promise. Yeah. And consumers yeah. are telling us like, yeah, you're not, you're not relevant to me. That's a, that's a big problem. And then also value if you're thinking about how more and more brands are leveraging their data to, to create new business models. Right. Um, you know, we're seeing mom more than ever more retailers doing direct um, buys and, and using that data for network networks and creating networks. And that trend will continue to progress, I would imagine. So talking about trends, I mean, here we are in 2022 and it's been a wild ride of a year already. But in the marketing world, certainly it's been a, a positive year in terms of activity. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot more marketing spend happening and marketing activity. Tell me a little bit more of what you think the rest of the year will look like. Uh, if I had a crystal ball. Yeah. <laughs> I think that one, a couple of things we can count on. I think, and is it, uh, I don't know if this is going to answer your question or not, but a couple of things we can count on is that uh, major world guardians are gonna to continue to be faced with heavy regulation mm -hmm. and challenges there. And they have to figure out ways that they can bring products that meet the demands of the marketer to engage with people, but also um, ensures that privacy is at the heart. Right. So we're gonna see that as a trend from a marketing perspective and kind of consumer perspective, you'll see that blend. 
Um, I think digital and, and, and video will continue to have that transformation, uh, that the landscape of linear versus OTT, uh, I, I think that that's gonna continue to expand and evolve. And we're already seeing that, that a lot of our clients are going very much into um, the OTV space and, and, and foregoing linear a little bit because they wanna make sure that they meet the consumer where they are. Right. So that was going to continue to engage. And I think the question, the most, the biggest question is going to have, what's the balance? Because let's not forget, linear has not died. But guys, if you hear that, it has not died. There's still a lot of volume there from an eyeballs perspective. Yeah. But again, if we bring in personalization, there's still an expansion uh, of um, the streaming services that will continue to be pervasive. And from a consumer standpoint, that con they'll continue to evolve and expand. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that social will continue to be a big part of our, our, level, uh, our everyday lives. And there's going to still be opportunity for dollars to go there. And those, so those ones are interesting to me, like where, where, where video, like the intersection of video social, for example, um, that's really fascinating to me. No, I, I think it's such a good perspective that you've just outlined there because we live in a world where we hear a lot about things like the metaverse. And it's just important that when you're thinking about that communications approach, I, I, I would say that you look at, look at where every, where society is in terms of that adoption curve of the Absolutely. future and, and reflect that in your approach. And so I, I completely understand what you're saying, which is where you're trying to kind of get probably grab not the web 3.0, but maybe we're at web 2.5, 2.6 or something. I don't know. You know <laughs> that would be probably really maybe a, a better reflection of yeah. kind of where and we are. And back to that point also, one of the advice we give clients is not to jump on the hype because there's a new hype, um, but also jump within intention. Mm. So how does my brand, my message and the consumer that I'm trying to reach with the business objectives that I have, how does this new thing uh, fit or how do I fit in it, right? right. Uh, I think that's also something to, to keep in mind the marketers forget. Uh, I love that. I, I think that's one of the best lines that I may, I may try to use that myself. Uh, jump with intention. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Super Soul. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, it's been amazing to talk to you. We've been speaking with Maybelline Francisco. She's also known as Meb. She is the global head of audience and data enablement at Mediacom. Uh, Mediacom is one of the leading media planning and buying agencies. They help people, brands, and businesses unleash their growth potential through media. Uh, and Meb is, is really working on quite a collection of activities, but really guiding businesses through their data approaches and strategies, their tech stack solutions, how to integrate, how to utilize, how to optimize, and, and make the most of all of this type of stuff. Uh, Meb, it's been wonderful talking to you today. Thank you so much uh, for being on Uncaged. Um, this Thank is you so much, guys. Yeah, it's been great. This is Uncaged. You know, we are a program that provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Please like and subscribe. And Meb, we look forward to talking to you soon. Catch you. Thank you.